Hi there and welcome to your yoga class. Today we're going to be doing a story called Matilda by a very, very famous author called Roald Dahl. And you don't have to have read the book, but if you have, then you'll know what's coming. And if not, don't you worry because you'll know the story after this anyway. So let's start with our song as we normally do. So let's pat our knees. And if you don't know the words, just pat your knees and I'm sure you'll learn the words after a couple of classes. Are you ready? One, two, three. Three, say hello and namaste, time for fun and yoga play. Am I ready? Yes I am, sitting on my mat. Well done, I could hear you from here. And then we get out a very special guest. He comes to every single yoga class, doesn't he? Because he loves watching yoga. Does anyone remember his name? His name is Om. That's a funny sound, isn't it? So after three, we're going to shout on Om. Are you ready? One, two, three. Um, that's it. You might feel your lips tingling when you're saying that mm, bit of that. So let's see if he's going to come out. Oh, here he is. Here he is. He's so glad to be here. He, that he's saying to me that he loves reading and he loves the story Matilda. So he's really looking forward to this one, isn't he? So let's put him on his wee yoga mat and he can keep his eyes on you. And we're going to cross our legs. We're going to put our hands at our heart and sit up straight. And we're going to say our magic yoga word, which is Namaste. So after three, one, two, three, Namaste. So let's get started with our story. And it's all about a little girl called Matilda. And the story starts when she's just a little baby. So we're going to do a baby pose, sitting with your legs out in front of you. You're going to bend one of your legs, hold on to your foot and put your arm round the other way like that and rock your baby very gently so you can pretend you've got a little baby a wee baby girl and she's so beautiful with the loveliest eyes that's right now do your other leg as well that's it we've got to do both sides in yoga haven't we and this little girl was called Matilda and she was the most beautiful and clever as we will find out in just a minute babies you will ever find and she grew up very very fast her parents weren't very nice though they were a little bit silly and they couldn't see how kind and clever Matilda was so by the time she was three she was reading books that's us and that very young so let's come down onto her bottoms we're going to put our feet together and you can hold on to your feet if you want and we're going to do book pose see if you flap your knees up and down like that into book pose that's it and we're going to lift one foot up for a page of the book. So she read lots of books, so one foot up. Doesn't need to be straight, you can just lift it up like this if you want. That's it. One book she read was written by Charles Dickens, another very famous author. And let's pull this foot up. And can you think of any famous authors? Well, let's say this book that she read was by Julia Donaldson. She's done lots of books, hasn't she? But you can choose any authors that you want and the author is the person that writes the book, remember? That's right. So, she was very clever at reading and she was also very clever at maths. So what we are going to do is we're going to put our hands out in front of us, just two fists, and as if we're counting on our fingers. That's right. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five and then six seven eight nine and ten and can you do this and we'll go 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 100 she was very very good at adding up and do you know by the time she was five she was getting a bus to the library all on her own because as I said her parents were a little bit silly and didn't really keep their eye on her no they didn't so let's get into bus pose sit with your legs out again hold on as if you're actually driving the bus that's right and it's a bumpy bus so let's bump 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 up and down in your bottom that's it the bus went one way and it came back up and the other way and back up and do you know it took her to a place called the library that's right where all the books are and you can borrow any of them for free and she met a very nice lady there who helped her do all of this so because her parents were so silly and they wouldn't even let her go to school, she used to play tricks on her parents. That's right. One day she put super glue in her daddy's hat, didn't she? <laughs> so let's stand up. Okay, you're going to get your super glue, you're going to get your hat and you're going to go 
with all the super glue. You're going to do it in the other hand. Get your super glue, nice squeezy super glue. <gasps> That's it. And when her dad put his hat on, so let's reach your hands right up and put the hat on. That's it. He went off to work. Let's walk off to work. That's right but his hat got stuck, didn't it? So he went to take his hat off and he couldn't get it off. So pretend to get your hat off. Oh, I couldn't get it off. And eventually I think Matilda's mummy had to cut it off, didn't she? So let's lift her hands up. And eventually he got the hat off and he wasn't too pleased because Matilda realized that she could move things just with her mind. That sh wouldn't that be a funny thing to be able to do? So we're gonna sit, she used to sit and concentrate quite hard. So let's sit on our knees and we're gonna shut our eyes if we want to. And we're gonna see if we can stay here for 10 whole seconds, what do you think? And I want you to try and concentrate and trying to move something. I don't think it'll maybe work. I've never seen anyone be able to move something with their minds. But if we think about it, then it means that we're not worrying about anything else that's maybe going on at the moment. So sit here with your eyes shut and I'll do the count. Are you ready? And relax your shoulders. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, four, three, two, and one. Well done. And see, just when you sit and think about things like that, you can make them happen. Sometimes you may not be able to make things move, but you can make other things happen. You can make your body relax. You can make yourself feel less angry or uptight. That's right. So it's nice to just take a little pause like that. So do you know what else Matilda did? She got up to something else. She put a parrot up her mum and dad's chimney, she did. So let's do chimney pose, first of all. Let's stand and raise our hands right up into a chimney and we're gonna do parrot pose. So feet together, bend over and we're gonna flap our wings, that's it. Just like this, parrot pose. Now what do parrots say? Pretty Polly, pretty Polly. Well, they say lots of other things. They can be quite rude parrots sometimes, can't they? But yeah, she put the parrot up the chimney and her mum and dad were not that pleased. So they decided it was about time Matilda went to school. That's right, because they said, well, you're four now, you should be going to school. And she said, actually, I'm six. She should have started school a little while ago. Mm. So they took her to a big school called... Crunch them whole. So let's put our legs apart and bring our hands right up into school pose. And Matilda was so excited because all she wanted to do was go to school. She loved to learn and she couldn't wait. So she met some wonderful friends at school. One was called Hortensia, that's right. So give Hortensia a lovely big cuddle. And Lavender, who was her special friend, that's right, give her a cuddle too. And she said, oh, is it lovely in this school? And they said, well, there's some nice teachers, but the head teacher is called Miss Trunchbull and she's not very nice at all. And she didn't have to wait long to meet Miss Trunchbull because all of a sudden she heard big stomps. Let's do big stomps with her feet. Duh, 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 big marching stomps. And the biggest woman you've ever seen with her hair, a bit like mine, <laughs> came out the front door of the school. And we're gonna put her legs wide. That's it. We're gonna bend our knees and put our hands on our hips. That's it. And look from left to right with a big frown in your face. So you said, children, and she didn't look nice at all. And do you know what she did? She went over to a little girl called Amanda Thripp, and she actually held onto her hair and threw her round and round the playground for having pigtails in. So we are going to spin round and round very, very carefully. Let's put our legs out wide and pretend you're holding on to Amanda Thripp's pigtails like Miss Trunchbull and go side to side like this. And Amanda Thripp went, ah! But don't worry, because Amanda Thripp landed in a bed of flowers. So coming down onto your bottom, put your hands between your knees and out through the side and come up into flower pose. That's it. Flutter your petals and you can keep your feet down if you want to as well. So she knew she wasn't very nice. And Lavender said to her as well, well, Miss Trunchbull's so horrible, she might put you in her chokey as well. And Matilda said, well, what's a chokey? And she said, well, it's a horrible cupboard that Miss Trunchbull can lock you in if you're naughty. Miss Trunchbull does not sound nice, does she? So we're going to come up, okay, onto your knees and put one foot out, one hand up, and we're going to open the chokey door. Are you ready? 
open the chokey door, that's right, and let's shut the chokey door as well, leg out to the side, hand up and go boom. And so Matilda thought to herself, I better make sure that I never get thrown in the chokey. That's right. So luckily, when she met her teacher, Miss Honey, she was the loveliest lady you could ever hope to meet. And she knew that Matilda was very, very gifted and very, very clever as well. And as time went on, Matilda and Miss Honey became great friends. Matilda even went to Miss Honey's house for a little cup of tea. That's right. So we're going to do another pose. It's not going to be as big as school pose because houses aren't as big as schools, are they? We're going to come up on our knees just like this and we're going to put our hands up into a small house pose because Miss Honey's house was very, very small and didn't have much furniture. And Miss Honey explained that her horrible auntie had, when her daddy had died, thrown her out of the house and she had no money and she had no friends. But Matilda and Miss Honey got on very well together and they sat reading books and playing games. Remember book pose? That's it. That's it, flap your knees up and down. And meanwhile at school, Miss Honey helped Matilda as much as she could, but Miss Trunchbull was still not being nice. She decided one day, because someone had stolen a bit of chocolate cake, she decided to make the boy eat the whole chocolate cake. Now this wasn't a small chocolate cake, it was a big chocolate cake, so let's come up into big chocolate cake pose. That's it, big, I mean really big chocolate cake pose, that's right, the size of a table the chocolate cake was and she, well Bruce Bogtrotter that was the boy that stole the cake you're going to have to eat the whole thing <gasps> so the whole school was watching and he had to sit down okay put your elbows on the floor and pretend you're eating the big chocolate cake hum 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 oh and after that he had a very very sore tummy so let's come down onto our backs that's it and we're going to put our knees side to side as if you've got a tummy hold on to your tummy oh poor bruce bogtrotter but do you know something he managed to finish the whole thing because everyone was encouraging him so much so Matilda's getting a little bit fed up with Miss Trunchbull and her bullying ways, that's right. So one day she decides to teach Miss Trunchbull a lesson. Miss Trunchbull comes into the classroom and Matilda's sitting there, they're all shaking. Can you do a wee bit of shaking? Because Miss Trunchbull's very, very scary. But Matilda uses special powers to write something on the blackboard, that's right. So we're going to sit here and we're going to do big circles. Now you can write something if you want, that's it. Or you can just do big circles. So do circles both way. Pretend you've got chalk and you're writing on the board or you might be doing this. And the message was so scary that Miss Trunchbull got very, very scared very, very quickly and she ran out of the room. So let's stand up and we're going to run, 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 run. And while she was running out of the room, all the children knew that she was so scared and they were so desperate to see the back of Miss Trunchbull, they started throwing food at her. So let's raise one hand up and throw a tomato at Miss Trunchbull. One hand up and throw an apple core at her and let's keep throwing that's it because she's been such a horrible bully to all of these children so they managed to get rid of Miss Trunchbull but how does that leave Matilda and Miss Honey well it turns out the horrible aunt that had taken Miss Honey's house away was Miss Trunchbull so they managed to get Miss Honey's beautiful house back and Matilda moved in with Miss Honey because their parents were still being awfully silly and they moved away so they gave each other a big big cuddle that's right and they were really happy together Matilda get all this maths and reading and they were such good friends and they lived together happily ever after without horrible Miss Trunchbull so we're going to lie down on our mats, put your legs out, that's it, and lie down. And we're just going to pretend that we are lying in Miss Honey's garden in our lovely big house. That's right. And we're going to think about how clever Matilda was. She was a little bit naughty playing tricks on her dad, wasn't she? But she was very, very clever and pretty kind as well. And so was Miss Honey. And Miss Trunchbull was a horrible bully, wasn't she? She wasn't very nice at all. But fortunately, she got a lesson taught to her, didn't she? And nobody knew where Miss Trunchbull had gone after that, but she won't be bullying anyone else, that's for sure. So just wiggling your fingers and wiggling your toes. We're going to slowly sit up again after having a little moment's rest. We're going to sit there, cross our legs, 
hands at her heart again and we are going to see our magic yoga word again which is namaste are you ready one two three namaste well done now we're going to find out what om thought of that as well om did you like that yes it's one of his favorite books isn't it and what was your favorite bit om he says it's the chocolate cake bit, which isn't very good because dogs aren't meant to eat chocolate, are they? So that's a wee bit naughty. Um, no chocolate cake for you, no. And he, sa he says he's a little bit scared of Miss Trunchbull. Well, we're all mis scared of Miss Trunchbull, um, to be fair. So I don't blame you for that one. But don't worry, she's not here anymore. So thank you very much for joining us again. You might want to do another yoga story right after this one. Or if not, if you're going to come back later, you can pick a different one or exactly the same one to do. But until then, we will see you later. Bye.